Alright right, folks, this is Night Fighter on Team Bomber Sports TV, back with another diecast review. Now, the last diecast review I did, I titled it a V8 Supercar Special, because I didn't expect it to be more than a one-off. But, I've since found, well, you remember in that video, I complained about how nearly all V8 Supercars models seem to have extortionate shipping rates from Australia. Since then, I'm currently tucking into a nice, big tray of humble pie. Because I found a website, www.vhsuperstore.com.au, who sell V8 supercar models. Their postage to the UK is 15, 15, not 50, as some places have quoted me, Australian dollars, which is about eight pounds, and about 10 to 15 American dollars. And I ordered, well, basically I'll put it this way. This model is one I really specifically wanted to get. I didn't mind or I would have been prepared to pay a lot of money on shipping just to get it. It's one I've really wanted. So I, I ordered this model last week from vhsuperstore.com.au thinking, wow, that's really good shipping rate. This morning, posting knocks on the door. This is there. Now, you can't see the bag that this came in, but I had to look over because I've got a few uh, incoming, quite a few VH Supercar models incoming. Uh, they'll be for future videos. But I looked on the label and it said from destination, or from um, original location, Australia. So I thought, hang on a minute. This is the model I ordered only last week with base rate really cheap shipping. And if we open the box, you see my massive fingers. You see, there's the unmistakable image of Jim Beam racing. And we'll peel the box away, we'll just take the box out. And what this model is, this is one of my favourite models of all, actually hang on a minute, there you go, it's in a slip case and everything, this is a really lovely model this is, special edition, and within, behold, one of my favourite V8 supercar models ever, you can see it there, it is, oh hang on a minute, there you go, there's even a little bit of packaging on the top to protect the metal aerials on the roof of the car, there you can see it, it's James Courtney's 2010 Ford FG Falcon, uh, championship winning car. He won the championship in this car in 2010 for Jim Beam Racing. Uh, basically the last year Jim Beam and Dick Johnson racing were any good. They basically then had a massive falling out with James Courtney and with Jonathan Webb in one of the sister cars and they all sodded off. Courtney's now tooling around in a Holden which can't be very nice for Ford fans, uh, me included. And Jonathan Webb's also defected to Holden so nice one Dick Johnson. You've just alienated two of your best drivers. Anyway, that's, that's by the by. This is the car that he won the championship in 2010 in. A very dramatic finale, including a mad kind of final race. If you can find on YouTube the final race, or I think it was the penultimate race at Sydney, where he and the other two contenders in the championship all crashed in the wet. And it literally, what won him the championship in the end was he was the only, the first one to get back going and repaired. He limped around for a few laps, nabbed some points, and that pretty much sealed the title. It was a mental finish to the season. And this is the special commemorative model car for it so I paid uh, well there's the metal plate that's I've got model 150 of 900 so only 900 of these ever made and I've got one and I'm dead chuffed as I said I was prepared to pay top dollar for this and I did I paid the best part of about 40 pounds for this and it worked out I think it was about 50 to 60 60 yeah it was 60 Australian dollars so a very expensive model for the scale uh, well, not actually, it's about $10 more, but it's a special edition championship winning car. Now, there it is in its, in its lovely case, the lovely design. You can see the, the image of the celebration on the back, and it's in the slip case and everything. It's really beautifully packaged for a simple model. Now, we are looking at the model itself, so let me just deploy my screwdriver here. I'm going to do something that model diecast collectors across the world will think is absolute sacri sacrilege. Sorry. And I'm going to take it off its base. Oh no! No! I've just inadvertently broken the packaging. It's, it's alright, no one noticed that. <laughs> I'll fix that at some stage. Um, Diecast collectors around the world absolutely wincing now. Not only have I taken the model out of its box, I've broken the box. They're, just now, they're now in floods of tears across the country. Across the world even. Uh, come on. Very long screws on this thing. Here we go. I'll just, I may as well show you there very simple uh, notice interesting point here NASCAR fans of which many of my viewers on my channel are and I am of course 
Notice, this is an alcohol-sponsored car, and there's no stupid packaging. Absolutely none, because they realise this is an adult collectible, and even if their 10-year-old son sees this model sitting on the side, they're not going to go and get plastered in Daddy's Jim Beam bottle. So, US model makers, take note, you don't have to put alcohol-sponsored cars on ridiculous plinths. Anyway, that's that rant over. Here is the car, off the base and in all its glory. Uh, now, unlike the Holdens I reviewed the other week, and the, ma the majority of cars, uh, V8 supercar models, are made by classic car collectibles. This one is quite unusual, it's made by Biante, who I, fa I heard that apparently they weren't making new V8 supercar models anymore. They're only concentrating on historic ones. Maybe this was built when they were still building modern V8 supercars. Maybe this was a special one they decided to do. But anyway, what it does give us a chance to do is compare and contrast between this and the classic car collectibles models. Now, let's bring it up to the camera. Now, first thing, I've just been fiddling with the front wheels. They don't steer. Now, on the classic car collectibles cars, they do steer. Not a big deal, it's a, it's a model, it just means you can't pose it that way. And for me, in my stop motions, it means I can't really accurately turn the, uh, the, the wheels to look like they're steering. Not a big deal, really. But everything else is present and correct. They've captured the look really nice on the front end. You'll have to excuse me. I've actually, uh, you'll have to excuse me. I've actually lost my glasses, so I'm kind of finding it hard to look very close up at the car. Needless to say, I'll bring it close in on the camera and show you all the details. You can see it for yourself there. Very nice custom Jim Beam livery. I believe they ran this at the final round. It wasn't a one he ran all season. There's the rear end with the distinctive FG Falcon spoiler. There's the two metal aerials on top. They're not flexible, unlike the ones on the hull, and they were kind of flexible. That's how they survived shipping unboxed. These are solid, hence why they had to have that little bit of packaging on. Now, let's have a look at the underside. Now, whew, have a look at that. That's a real cut above what we got on the... What, uh, is it a cut above what we got on the Holdens? Well, let's bring in one of the Holdens to have a look. Uh, this is a classic car collectibles Holden. It's the uh, the Will Davison model I showed you last time. Uh, put them side by side. Mm, I'd say the Biante model has more detail. I mean, look at that. Incredibly intricate detail on the bottom here. Really, really nice. You can see the entire Watts linkage at the back. Uh, I believe that's the fuel cell or the battery. Um, all the exhaust system, the suspension. Really, really nice. The only thing that would make it any better, obviously, is if it worked. But you bring around, there's detail inside the car, there's the roll cage, all in there, really nicely fine detailed windscreen wiper as well. It's all there, you really do, with these models, you really do pay for what you get. It does seem to be, well it is top dollar, but you really do pay for what you get. And what you get here is a splendid model that is going to really look the part in my upcoming V8 Supercar Stop Motion series, as you've probably heard me banging on about lately. Um, obviously this now takes my total. On, zoom out a bit this takes my total of cars up to three there you go there's the Ford sat amongst the uh, the two Holdens and I also have another three no four I have another four cars on order on their way hopefully very very soon so with any luck my V8 supercar stop motion series should be taking off in the new year watch out for it and I promise I'm gonna do it I know I've promised to do stop motions a lot recently and then sort of haven't but I promise you this one will happen and these cars are going to be the stars of it and in the meantime until then this has been my review of the Biante model cars 143rd scale James Courtney 2010 Ford FG Falcon Jim Beam Racing stroke Dick Johnson Racing it is actually Dick Johnson Racing they just call it Jim Beam Racing because it's Jim Beam that's the main sponsor so yeah a lovely model, it's now going to take pride of place as one of my favourite models on my shelf and it's going to be lovely. So expect to see another stop motion test or sue very very soon. I am getting new equipment and new stands and tripods and practicing with new techniques to really make the new series really really good, a step above anything I've done before. So watch out for a few more short clips very soon and some more diecast reviews when the next batch of V8 supercars I have on order come in, which should be very very soon. In the meantime, have a lovely day, have a nice weekend, and I shall see you soon. Yeah.